he wasn't going to be the best professor in the world. But that you were there for a day. Right? Yeah. But you also been a professor, right? Uh, sort of. You taught in where did you teach? You I taught lecture. Yeah, I've uh, done uh, guest lectures at some universities across India. But uh, what I want to focus on right now, I'm sorry if uh, we you want to steer the interview in a certain no, direction. Okay. But transferred here to Malvern when he was in fourth grade and by fifth grade teachers made him an accelerated schedule. He would take high school classes in the morning and then fifth grade electives. Somebody thinks that you have to handle when you're in high school, especially when you're 12, that you can't just stop to think, well, I'm in high school. I mean, that's not what most regular people do because high school is kind of compulsory. But when you're 12 years old you're, and you're still caught up with this like waterfall of work, um, it's like once you finish one assignment, another one comes streaming in from a different class. Uh, so it's kind of uh, hard to manage if you, especially if you don't have a proper time management schedule, which I did not last year. Uh, so that was hard. But this year, I think I've got everything on track. And I'm hoping that even with all of the challenges that I faced, I'm going to be able to graduate at 12 years old. Feels really cool, but sometimes you just have to. So, uh, sometimes you just have to like uh, move past that and think, well, I'm here now and I've got to do the work I have to do. There's no time to just be in awe of what I've accomplished already. I have to keep moving forward, right? How do you manage it all? I mean, how much time yeah, do you spend yeah, during the week studying and doing work? Yeah, that's a pretty long time. Most of the time I'm not doing math because that's the kind of thing I do in my free time. And it turns out that. Uh, when you're pretty good at math, you mostly struggle with things besides math. So, like for example, my Spanish class, I was not meant for foreign language. So, it's one of my hardest classes right now. And so I have to spend a decent portion of my week, maybe five or six hours a week, uh, just studying like conjugations, past tense, future tense, just to get prepared for one test. And if I don't prepare it, I get a scary grade, like uh, 80. Which, I mean, uh, it's all right for some high school students, but for me, I don't uh, want anything falling below 85 or 90. I try keeping myself to a high standard, even when you catch a strain of senioritis. So, is, is that something you're experiencing? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and you've been working hard. I feel like, I mean, I've already been accepted to college. Why not just chill? Uh, let that grade point average fall 10 points. What is really EPA? Uh, for the past three quarters, it's been 96 or 97, and I'm pretty sure there were a few people with higher than me, but it doesn't really matter uh, to me. I don't want to like compete with others on that kind of subject. Uh, all I know is that I'm trying to better my education in the best way that I possibly can, as well as I have to take some required courses. When is your birthday? Uh, already passed like a month ago. Are you living on campus? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, I really chose NYU uh, because it's one of the only universities I got accepted to that doesn't force you to live in a dorm for the first year. So uh, I'm going to be commuting because I don't think uh, that uh, they would find it savory and I certainly uh, wouldn't like it if I had to dorm with like a 21 year old roommate. I have social media channels on YouTube and Facebook, probably some other platforms too, but they're not really as important as those two, where I try to spread as much uh, educational content about math and science as possible. So I'm trying to cover every sim single subject along with my brother who's being the cameraman right now. He's kind of toned down uh, producing videos to work on his own life but uh, back in the day he used to be making videos all the time about higher math and physics subjects like uh, quantum computing or linear algebra. And it was really fascinating to me to see his style of teaching and I've taken some things from it as well. So that was, uh, I've been unofficially teaching for these past few years, and I hope that once I graduate, uh, I'll be able to actually teach formally and spread this love of math and physics that I have of, on, for myself, uh, and I go to try to light the passion of every single student in my class. And I'm sure there are other professors out there at, say, NYU or MIT or Princeton that have that characteristic. In fact, that's why I'm going there. But uh, so I don't think my uh, work would be that valuable there, uh, surely for credibility, but not for much else. I want to 
bring my teaching to these uh, lower level schools, schools who don't have that co those kind of professors that are actually passionate about things. Now, my counselor, uh, my counselor, uh, Ms. Gottman, uh, well, the head of counseling, Ms. Gottman, knows what I'm going to be talking about with this one, but just to not throw shade at anybody, uh, I went to a cop. Uh, you might know I already have like extracurriculars at NYU and Stony Brook, uh, as well as Brooklyn College, but I also went to one other college this semester, and uh, that college, I'm not going to mention the name because, once again, no shade, but uh, I went to it for only one day instead of the rest of the semester, even though it was a topic I really liked, uh, E&M, uh, that I was hoping to learn about because I didn't know much of it. I thought it wouldn't be boring, and when I looked at the syllabus, it covered everything that I wanted it to cover. Uh, but the professor, when I actually walked into class on the first day, he wasn't passionate at all. He would just like... Uh, sit, uh, sitting at the board writing things that should have been taught the year prior and all of the prerequisites and I could already sense that he wasn't going to be the best professor in the world but then you went there for a day right? yeah but you also been a professor right uh, sort of you taught in where do you teach I yeah I've uh, done uh, guest lectures at some universities across India but uh, what I want to focus on right now I'm sorry if uh, we, you want to steer the interview in a certain direction, yeah, okay. but uh, yeah, I just want to focus on that there were some professors that I just feel like weren't very passionate, and uh, this professor, uh, the second half of the class, he was just sitting back in his little like rocking chair thing, talking about how this is like a lower level course, this was supposed to be a sophomore course, but all of you students are 30 or 40 years old, uh, how are you taking this now? And I don't know if we will be able to achieve anything. So it was a lot of uh, blah, 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 and I could already sense on the first day it wasn't going to be great. So in the study lounge, I uh, saw some other uh, students from the class, and I asked him, uh, and I, another student, and I asked him, is this class the best? I'm already like feeling some red flags. He said, yeah, no, we consider this guy to be the worst in the department. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I immediately dropped that class after the first day. So there are some professors where you have to be like, get out. So, and I don't want to be one of those professors. I want to be someone who actually like, spreads the love of math and science to uh, the whole world. And you feel like you would be, yeah, definitely. I, like, what's high school been like for you? You're 12 years old. Like, how have people interacted with you? What do people say? Uh, yeah, I think that the community here, and I've emphasized this in every other interview, uh, they've been extremely respectful, both the students, as you can see, those students over there, uh, were extremely uh, helpful and responsive, and they've really been, for well, most of the community, uh, very appreciative of my presence here, and I can't thank them enough for that. I can all really want to thank the administration as well for uh, helping me actually get here today. I wouldn't be skipping uh, so many grades if I was met with any other administration, maybe like one or two at most, or even in the worst case scenario, they just say, we have no proof, send them back to sixth grade. So uh, that's why I'm really appreciative of the students and te te teachers here. They've been able to, sorry, they've been able to meet this unique situation and they've been able to meet this unique situation so head on and I can't thank them enough for that for being able to apply their lessons in a hands-on way that only a, that a 12 year old would understand and uh, for even for unfamiliar subjects and uh, I can't say I can't uh, give enough gratitude in just a few sentences like this uh, to all the students and teachers and the administration that have helped me. Okay. Uh, what information do you find on that table about krypton? Uh, so, like the first ionization energy, the uh, electronegativity, the melting points, the boiling point, the density, and the atomic radius. What do you notice about the density of krypton? Uh, let me see. Uh, the density of krypton is really low compared to other elements uh, in its period. Why would you say it's low? Uh, well, well... What do you know about krypton in its natural state? Oh... Uh, <laughs> Wait one second. So let me look at the actual periodic table. So krypton in its natural state is a noble gas. That's correct. And what's another element that would have a higher density compared to krypton? Uh, bromine. Okay, so go look that up on table S. Yep. So that's number 35, which is actually the halogen, like before. So if you guys look at uh, element... If you were younger, that would be like, whoa. 
Um, oh, like, like brag a little, like you do a secure the owner turbo. Like, go ahead, tell us some things. Come on. Okay, so I'm not the most braggadocious person in the world, but I guess I can say that I just really had a passion for other subjects as well, like. For example, history. I used to do alternate uh, history all the time, like imagining what would happen if, for example, World War, uh, uh, World War One never happened, or uh, what would happen if, uh, say, Italy never joined World War Two, or what would happen if the American Revolution failed, or all of these kinds of things that uh, are very interesting scenarios, and they don't really have any use in real life because we can't actually time travel back and experiment with that kind of stuff. We can't. Uh, go back in time and uh, tell Benito Mussolini, hey, go join World War II. But, I mean, it's fun to imagine these kinds of stories, uh, this kind of fantasy, and uh, that's the kind of thing that I really like. What, else? what about the periodic table? When did you know the periodic table? Yeah, I used to memorize the periodic table because I thought it was nifty. I didn't know at the time that every single region reference table had the periodic table plastered on the back. But How old were you? I was two or three actually, and I was able to memorize most of the elements of the periodic table. Uh, back then, there were still some elements that were pending, but uh, it was a pretty... What about like local location, or the, the states, or the capital? How about spelling? Then you, when you initially came to us, you were yeah. a spelling whiz. People, the high school students would throw words out to you at nine years old, and you would spell them off the cuff. Yeah, well, that was kind of funny, but... I, I have mean, a video of you doing that in yeah, my office. Yeah, once you... I don't know. Just uh, rattle it off. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry guys, I'm not like one for bracket, but I, uh, just saying I'm also passionate about like geography, like knowing states and capitals and that kind of stuff, but that's mostly a mem uh, memory endeavor. I don't find that that takes much actual skill, and it's just kind of like a measure of how much space is in here. How much space is in there? Probably like 10 gigabytes, less than your average <laughs> computer, uh, but... <laughs> Let yeah. me ask you this, like at what point in your life do you remember, you know, realizing like I am a little different than kids my age, like I have this great ability. When did you realize that? Sorry, this is an itch on my nose that is not going to <laughs> okay. to a freaking allergy. Don't worry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, but uh, what I would say is that I wouldn't really consider myself like that different. Certainly I have like a passion for math that uh, no other kid is sewing at this age. Uh, uh, no other kid I've seen is sewing. But I mean, I guess it's the one that says like, "Hey, like I have this great talent." You know, I'm. Yeah, I guess uh, for my parents, it, I guess they started calling me a child prodigy around seven. But basically, they started accelerating me when I was three or four years old, and uh, that was really something I appreciate uh, for my uh, of my parents. Just trying to educate me in the best way possible. And I think there's like a poster back there in Dr. Cressy's room uh, that says, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But no matter what, always keep moving forward. So there were some points in my learning cycle in which I just feel like I can't keep moving. But you have to persevere because at the end, you're going to get that payoff. You're going to get that little, little slice of dopamine, aha. You're going to get the understanding at the end of the tunnel. And that's what I really do all of the learning for, so that I, it clicks. What do you say to someone who's watching this, who's like maybe not doing so well, they want to finish off the end of the year, what's your advice to any child who thinks maybe they can't do it? Never give up. I mean, there's always some place out there where you can do it, and I know this feels like copy-pasted from maybe a number of other motivational speakers, but I'm just going to say, um, uh, there's always a way for you to keep advancing your education. So it doesn't matter if you feel you're at a low point right now. It's not like someone's going to kill you because your GPA is like a 70. Uh, you have to keep moving up because uh, there's no penalty for uh, there's no penalty for failing to understand something. So just uh, try uh, hitting the same concept over and over. Uh, try try to approach it in different ways. As Einstein said, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing twice and expecting different results. And I think that uh, the culmination of all of that is going to be your understanding. 
build it up fully uh, because if your foundations are weak, then as you keep building it up and up and up, eventually the whole thing will collapse down. What do you love learning? Yeah, that's really the prime thing that I do in life, learning. Of course, there's that. There's uh, some times where you just have to uh, take out the chessboard and enjoy the dopamine stream, uh, but most of the time, I really like the struggle that comes with learning. Do you play soccer or tennis, or it's just what else do you do? Um, I guess you could call me a tennis player. I'm not that good at any sports, but if I had to pick the best one, it would be tennis because I'm pretty good at predicting the motion of the ball. In Malvern, Long Island, Jody Goldberg, Fox 5 News.